Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord once again to each and every one of you. We do appreciate everybody. Yes, yes, yes. That has joined tonight and especially Pastor Paula Little. We thank you for gracing us in your presence on tonight. Yes, we yes. Are in. <laughs> it's been an honor to be here. I can I do. I count it such an honor and a pleasure to be here, man. I'm, I, 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 I do. I got, I'm nervous. Can I tell you? That's just how excited I am. I got cold feet. My hand are perspiring. That's just how nervous I am. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. That's a good nervousness. I feel the yes. same way, but I yes. come with an expectation. My nervous is I'm ready to receive. See, yes, yes. Amen. I am Amen. ready to receive. I was telling Charles, you know, when you go to a good restaurant, we was talking about eating and stuff. And when you know it's a good restaurant, you you go with an expectation. Yes, yes. You know the food gonna be good. You know the yes. food is gonna be hot. You know, so that's what I'm ready for tonight. I know it's gonna be good. It's gonna be hot. It's gonna be on time, Thank and you. it's gonna be from the Lord. Yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Yes. So yes. before before we get started, uh, do you want to uh, tell the people a little bit about yourself, your church, and everything? Yes. Um, as you know, my name is uh, Pastor Paula. Um, mm -hmm. I am senior pastor of uh, Kingdom Authority Ministries. We're located here in the beautiful, wonderful city of Til Talladega, Childersburg, Talladega County, Alabama. And I say that because we reside in Talladega County, but our street address is like Talladega. And then our ministry is actually located in, in Childersburg. Um, um, probably People may or may not know that my husband passed away in May of um, this year, May of, of last year. It's almost been a year now. And so that meant I had to step up and take on that role. But church has been in me a long time. I've been doing, we've been doing ministry a long time. And so um, not only am I a senior pastor, we have a thriving um, child care business. We um, have been doing that for the last 15 years. So God has been good to us. Um, we have four children, two boys, two girls, and um, God, God is good. God is good. Amen. Amen. I have, we and I have a hometown connection. I'm born and raised in Lynette, West, yeah. um, West Side, 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 Alabama. Um, yeah. My dad was a great late Bishop O.C. Hicks. My mom, Mother Juanita Hicks. So um, I've been around the church a long time. Um, so we have we have deep roots, Brother Charles and Shanice and I. We have yes, we have yes, deep roots. Yes. We come from from way back when. So right. yes, that's, that's yes. where I am. That's who I am. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, we 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 want uh, you to let the Lord lead you. You know, yes. however, you know we we do have a few questions. Our foundation be basically suffering, and I know uh, that you can definitely speak into our lives. Mm -hmm. uh taking into account i mean you lost your husband like what six months five months before we lost our son mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah right. maybe four months or so before we lost our right. son so right. we lost a lot of things uh that you can say that really can help us push through you know because it's it's hard it I, mean, it's difficult. I mean right. day i mean daily right. you know i go through daily you know i know yeah. i get on facebook and i I still try to preach and I, I try to teach, but at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm hurting. I'm hurting at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, we just want you to speak to the people, you know, however the Lord leads you. Absolutely. Because I know there's a lot of more people out there are probably experiencing something. Right. You know, right. so so uh, I know my wife has some questions. Right. Uh, we're, 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 I'm willing to go however God is leading you. I'm the guest in your house. My dad has always taught me when you when somebody else's house, you do what they do, you know. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. when I, I I'm open to the questions, I'm open to however whatever flow you guys have, and however God however God wants to go, that's how I'm going to go, and whatever God wants to do. We talked about you know how do how the pain and suffering. Um, it's been not quite a year just yet. May the fifth will be a year for my family and I since my husband transitioned to be with the Lord. And every day, I mean, like today was National Linesman's Day. He worked for uh, Coosa Valley Electric. He was an electric linesman, crew, crew chief there. He had a staff, a team of people work, who worked for him. 
And so today was National Linesman's Day. Uh, one of our granddaughters made a post. And I mean, it just it just kind of went viral because that's the kind of person he was. Yes, you know, yes. all the guys were saying, oh, we miss him. We miss him. You know, um, it, it's just it's just phenomenal. Um, the impact and love that he had on the lives of the people that he touched. You know, we often think about when we do ministry, you know, will we ever be mega? God didn't, I don't think God intended everybody to be mega. Somebody need to be mouse. Everybody mm-hmm. can't be mega. Somebody yeah. got to be mouse. Yeah. Somebody yeah. at church mouse, you know, we need that. I, I got to keep remembering that I am not on the back porch because yeah. I kind of, I, I, I'm real relevant to the people who may be listening. So if I say something, I tell them, the smaller the club, the bigger the party. That's relatable to a younger group of people or someone who may not necessarily understand you, you know, uh, in God's presence. And so, you know, I try to relate to them. So, but that's the kind of impact that my husband had on people. He, we never had a mega ministry. We probably, well, for one reason, our facility probably only held about 50 people. So, but Mm -hmm. God graced us with those 50 and, he yes. was faithful to those 50 and they were faithful to us. And so, but the impact that he had on the community that he served, yes. my husband yes. was a servant leader. Um, truly, when Jesus said, I came not to be served, but to serve, yes. that's, who he was. that's exactly who Pastor Don was. And so that's how we founded our ministry. We built our ministry on servanthood, not about what. You know, um, he never wanted an armor bearer. He never, he didn't want any of those things. He wanted to serve somebody, you know, man, let me get your Bible. You know, he, that was him. You know, he was always taking care of other people. And so. And I can, I can, if I could just say this real quick, I can attest to that. And I'm always here in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. My mom have, have uh, related messages and told me when I speak to her about people who have passed. And my mom was a strong woman, so it, it kind of difficult to shake her. Right. But when she told me about your husband, she broke. Wow. Yeah, my mom broke. Oh, so yeah. I knew she said, Charles, he was a great man. Mm-hmm. She said, I knew him ever since he was a little boy. He was a great man. And she started, I said, Mama, yo, and she got quiet. You know when people get quiet. Right, right. She started sniffing. Yeah. So I, I I know he was a great man. Yeah. And it's hard to shake that that pounds the penalty. You know, oh, yes. she so much. She mm-hmm. sees so much and deal with it so much. So right. I knew then. I said, "Yeah, he he was a great man of God." Uh, I'm telling you, it is his his legacy, his life. I believe it, it lives on. Not even just with his children, not just within his uh, uh, his immediate family, but the community at large. You know, I mm-hmm. meet people all the time who will say, "Are, are you?" Mr. Little's wife, or you pass the little's wife who may not have known. Say, yes, I am. They, that's the first thing they say is he was a great man. They mm-hmm. often talked about how their car would break down. This one young lady often remind me of how he bought, he went and bought her a battery, put it in her car, and she kept trying to pay him money. He's like, no, you ain't, you ain't got to pay me money because what I'm going to get is going to be bigger and mm-hmm. better than that. He said, because exactly. at the end of the story, I want you to know God. That's my yeah. only that's my only yeah. motive for buying this berry yeah. is that you get to know God. And today she is our spiritual daughter in the Lord. She's married, her and her husband is thriving. And she often reminds me, what if he had not sewn that battery in my car that night? What if I was broke down side the road? We didn't know her. She didn't know us. We didn't know each other. And right. so we just that's who we are. We love people. We sow into people. And so mm. when we hurt, we've been healing other people for so long. Exactly. Until when we hurt, it's 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 different. When right. we hurt, it's different because we've just been healing other people for so long, helping them get through their pain, helping them get through their grief. You know, as pastors, we've sat alongside other families who have gone through the exact same things that you and I are going through. And we would always, I would tell them, I've, I'm guilty of saying, oh, you just got to trust the process. You just got to trust the process until my husband passed. <laughs> It wasn't so easy. Talk about that. Talk about that. Talk about it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't so easy to trust the process. It wasn't easy trying to trust the process because I'm trying to process, you know, this is a good man. You know, I'm trying to process why did this happen? You know, 
I'm just being real as me. I started name calling, you know, why you didn't go get this one and why you didn't go get that one. You know, I'm just thinking all this stuff in my head, you know, and I'm sitting there and, and God, it dawned on me. He said, you will never be able to trust the process until you learn to trust the processor. Come on, somebody. Come on, Jesus. somebody. Oh, and I'm like, come on. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah. I got to trust the processor That's before right. I can trust the process. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So you trust that Nike is a name brand. You've never seen the facility that that shoe may be made in. It could be made in the worst dunk ever. You you trust that when we buy these Apple iPhones that we're getting top dollar quality. Why? Because we trust the processor. We trust mm -hmm. the person who put it out there. We trust the one who made it. We trust. So I trust him as the processor. He mm -hmm. made me. He he knows me. He formed me. He shaped me. Even before in my mother's womb, he knew. He knew yeah. past his beginning and he knew his end. And he knew everything about the day to the letter, how it happened, you know. He had just retired maybe a year prior to his passing and we bought a camper and I mean, we made all these great plans to spend some time mm -hmm. together with our grandkids. He's going to let me quit work. And <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Take me off Don't that. Oh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking forward to spending time with him. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And man, I'm like, and this happened. And I'm like, oh, we bought a camper. We just, you know, we just plan to do all these things. And so God has to remind us of some stuff that when we know we can trust the processor, right? Mm -hmm. We trust experience. That's what we trust, right? Mm -hmm. So when you trust Apple, you trust the experience that Apple has given you. Exactly. So that you know the next time you buy Apple, you ain't got no problem. Jesus. The next time you buy Nike, you ain't got no problem. Yeah, you exactly. trust the experience that the last pair of sneakers you bought. Man, they held they held ground for you. They they mm -hmm. they rooted and grounded you, right? So Pastor got electrocuted. He he's been living dangerous. Can I tell you this? His whole life, he has been living dangerous. He was a fireman in the city of Lynette and was working on a carburetor on a motor on our home. Not at that particular time, he was a fireman, but he was not working at the fire department at this particular day. Working on a car, motor blew up on him, and burned him in his face. Why? Right? Wow. Mm. He was down for about. Two or three weeks, you know, he got up, went on a movie. Well, we moved here in 92 and 90, 96. He got electrocuted with over 7,000 volts of electricity, right? Wow. So we go into the hospital at, at, at UAB in Birmingham, and the doctors tell me, Miss Little Will, I can't promise you anything. He says, All I can tell you is we got to wait for 24 hours and see what's going to happen. He said, That's all I can tell you. I said, so you're telling me, he said, ma'am, 24 hours look real slim right now. And I remember going into that room and at this time I was a much younger mother. My children was much younger. And I remember crying out and telling God, listen here, I'm too young to be a widow right now. I don't want to do this by myself. I don't want to raise my kids. I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to have to do this by myself. My kids need their dad. They need him. Right. So I'm sitting there, and so we make it through the, th the, the 24 hours, and we make it through 48, and things are looking good. The doctor said, well, he'll probably go on home in about six months, and he's going to have to have all this therapy and treatment and all this stuff. In about two days, they had his arms bandaged up. He got he and I walking down the hall. He going, hands are stretched out because he got electrocuted, went across his chest, came out, blew his fingers out. Just messed up some stuff internally. But how about this joke is walking around in other rooms, laying hands, praying he on the people. The doctors are like, what the world? Here I am walking behind him trying to hold that gown together. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm walking behind him trying to hold this gown together. But he is persevering through the pain. Through the, he not once stopped. God gave him such a miracle. He came and went back to work in six weeks. He didn't wow. even, he wasn't even out six months. He was out of work for only like six weeks. Wow. But he was laying because he said, God has positioned me to pray. So all he had to do was just leave. His hand was up. They had put the, because they didn't want the webbing, his skin to web together. So he gave us these two rods, steel rods, one on each side. And so he held his hands out. 
fingers out. He couldn't close the tears with it. So that means when he got to me, he just leaned over and laid hands on me. This is God He said, honey, God has already positioned me to pray for them. Mm. And I'm like, oh, you are something else. Really? Wow. But he was that kind of person. He taught us as a family to trust the processor. There would be times he would say, you got some money? I'm like, wait a minute. I got $50, but give me the $50, honey. I'm like, babe, I, I won't. He said, give me the $50. I'm like, man, I give him. I said, why did you give them give them my money? What? He said, because see, you and I, we can trust God for another $50. We can trust God for the money. They don't know. They need to experience the love of God right now. They broke. They ain't got no gas. How else they going to know the love of God? I mean, that's just how he was. And so through all of these experiences, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. I learned to trust the processor. Wow. I figured, God, I trust you trusted me then when you didn't let my husband die then when my children were small and we were praying and we we're doing all this. So when it came up to this time right. and I'm in and I'm in I'm in the emergency room there and he's there stretched out before me, you know, lifeless limp. And I'm saying, God, please don't, please don't. He said, we already been this way, little. He okay. said, we already been this way now. Mm -hmm. He said, didn't I give you what you wanted? Didn't I give you what you asked for? And I started to cry. And my sons who were in the room with me immediately knew, Mama. He said, they were praying the same thing. He said, God just told me, you asked me to let your dad live till you get to be a grown man. Wow. He said, God told him, you're a grown man now. He says, wow. you got, it's time for you to stand. So even with that, we trust the processor. We trust that whatever God is doing, how why God did whatever he did, we don't know. We ain't trying to figure it out, but God knows. God and so knows. we trust the yep. processor. Yep. So while we trust in the processor, we can trust the process, right? So mm -hmm. they asked me, are you going to get, I don't know if I'm getting married. I'm not looking for nobody. I got to be found. That's what the scripture said. He who That's found, it. I ain't looking. <laughs> That's I'm it. Not looking. He right. who finds a wife. Right. It's a good thing. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not looking. I got to be found. Right. I gotta be found, so God's gonna keep me covered until That's He lets somebody find me. Jesus, exactly. so I'm trusting the process, even even in that. So I, I I would say to you, because of the experience that you've had in your relationship with with Christ, you got a long, deep line, a long history of of having that faith. And do we get weary? Uh huh. We do. Do we get tired? Yes, we do. Right. right. Couple couple of weeks ago, you know, I thought. God, I ain't going to church now another Sunday. I'm going to quit. I don't want to do this. I didn't ask you to let me be the pastor. I didn't ask for this. I, I want, I'm I I'm done with this. I, I just want to go somewhere and sit down and, and get poured into. I just want to walk away from this. I don't want this. I opened up his Bible. I'm sitting here at his desk. Open up his Bible to Psalms 37 and 4. He got it highlighted in pink. Delight yourself in the Lord. Lord. Mm. You delight yourself in the Lord. I'm like, why you keep messing with me? <laughs> <laughs> right. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you yeah. right. the desires of your heart. So right. whatever it is, God's got it. So when mm. we, if we're going to trust the processor, that's based on the experiences and the things that we've had, um, right. that we've seen him be faithful through over time. It doesn't happen overnight. It's right. happened over time. You can look back through your life and see the number of times that you prayed. And when it looked like when well, nothing going to happen, God always came through. Yes, he yeah. did. He yeah. always came through. Always. He yeah. always came through. I don't care how minute, how small, how little, how dense it seemed. God always came through. Always. Jesus. Yeah. I've been, I've been, a, I've been on this walk, my faith walk, probably since I was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. I remember, um, your mom actually was preaching a message the night I gave my whole life to the Lord. You know how we do being in, in the church, St. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we go to church and we got that good feeling, them good vibes, you know. We them yeah. good vibes. So, but she was actually preaching a revival at the Lynette Head Start building. That building is torn down now. Mm -hmm. So my dad and I, um, in his older age, I started kind of just wanted, wanted to be with him and drive for him and spend some time with him learn ministry a little bit closer, you know, but she was teaching that night. I got there and she was teaching on the power of the Holy Ghost. She was teaching about the power of the Holy Ghost. And she said, you're in here right now. She said, you've been walking with God a long time. She said, but you ain't totally sold out to God. And I'm sitting there, why is she talking about me like that? 
you know, I've been following my dad around. You know, I had some little little quirks in my life that needed to be straight that God needed to clean out. I had some stuff, you know, down low that he needed to take care of. But that particular night when she ministered about the power of the Holy Ghost, it's like wings of angels just came and lift me off my feet, took me when I came to. When I came through, <laughs> that's it. That's it. And then I came through, baby. When right, I right. Through, when, I when, I came through. when I came through, I got up. And they people say this as a you know as an idiom or figure of speech. When I came through, I jumped up, running and shouting, hollering. I'm promising you, I did. I really did that. That wasn't a make believe thing. When I came through, I'm like, man. They were getting ready. They had. They let me stay there and let God get through it. Let God did. I hear mother. Mother said, "Work on Lord. Work it for Lord." I was. I was giving it all I had out. Clean that hair up with that Jerry curl. I swept the floor because you know when Jerry curl back in them days. Swept the floor with that Jerry curl, rolling around. You know that yeah. went asymmetrical, high on one side, low on one side, baby. I cleaned the floor up with that. Right. But when I came through, through most Jesus. Gentle, Lord Jesus. Man, they, they prayed for me, they loved on me, and they helped me get through this. My mom, my dad, my entire church, we didn't call them the church family then. They were the saints, you know. <laughs> now we say our church family, but then yeah. they were the saints, you know. Yeah. So the saints yeah. helped me walk this walk that I'm walking. It, it, that's how I learned to trust the processor. I've watched them. I've watched their testimonies. The Bible says that we're overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony their testimony of hearing them testify of watching their lives of going through how the hardships and challenges that they face it made me who i am today i didn't get to be who you know if i go to the platform i take all of them with me when i hit when i hit that platform on sunday morning i i break on my bible i'm taking all of that with me elder just sister just took the jacket elder joe i'm taking all of them bishop hicks mother hicks pastor i'm taking all of them with me every last one of them go to the platform with me because i'm a representation of who they are and what God, what they put in us so when i stand i ain't standing alone i'm sta i'm standing with the faith and and the truth and the experiences that i've seen mother wallace oh my gosh can't leave her out it's when amazing oh yes she <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's just amazing to, to hear someone else talk like me yeah, <laughs> I'm always calling Bishop Hitt's name, Mother Dunn name. Yeah. I'm talking about LB Wallace's name. I mean, it just I it keep replaying in my head. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know why. You know, I was a little boy. Yeah, let's go down there by that that train track. Come on and here, go hit that, that that Holy Ghost hit that play. Hey, here right there. Come on now, somebody. <laughs> yeah, all of, that, all of that is in me. Right, it's in there, bro. It's all in of there. that is in me. Right. You know, as a, as a little boy. You no, know, says seeing miracle after miracle after, after miracle. miracle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, Sister LB Wallet, man. I'm seeing, huh? I didn't have to go to Doctor. I didn't have to go to Doctor Himberg. Now time, now, no. <laughs> we never, you know, we never had a doctor. We never had, even when I got older, as a, you know, and I like, well, did you go to doctor? Do you have a, pri a primary physician? I'm yeah. Like, what is that? Primary. <laughs> Primary physician. What? What is that? I mean, like having kids, but prior to being, high, yeah. I didn't do that because my dad will pop over that script Isaiah fifty three and five. Yeah. You were yeah. wounded. He was wounded for your transgression. Yeah, he man. taught us the scripture. He taught us Romans twelve and twenty two. The wages of sin is death, but the gift. I mean, he put that in us. I mean, those scriptures can come back. Hey, you Leviticus can let me fall for I'm the Lord your God that brought you out. He taught us all of this. So those are how I trust the processor yes. based on those experiences that I had in my past. Yes, Jesus. yes. That's how all of those people, what they put in us, all those saints. Today yes. we are we are evangelists and we are prophets and we are apostles and we and I, I ain't talking about. It. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm, right, right. Some of them right. twenty, some of them nineteen, some of them eighteen. Y mm -hmm. You ain't had no experiences, you know. Right. I, I, you ain't had no experience to to me. I can't say it based on the 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 studies that you may have acquired. You can acquire mm -hmm. knowledge, mm -hmm. but you can't acquire wisdom. That comes with time. 
Come you on, can so acquire so. some knowledge. They can, go to, they can go to the school of the prophet. They can study uh, the letter. They can follow all the credentials, the uh, curriculum and the academics and come out with those titles. But yeah. what about that experience? What about that wisdom? That wisdom. What about hey, that, hey, that hey. Yeah, yeah, that will. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. That that way it is. That the knowledge got to be applied. Absolutely. Yeah. You know that not that 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 wisdom. That knowledge got to be applied. Yes. And so that knowledge tells them what to do, but wisdom tells them how to do it. Oh. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. knowledge tells them what to do. Wisdom right. tells them how to do it. Knowledge mm -hmm. can tell me to shoot a gun. Mm -hmm. It can teach me how to shoot that gun, but wisdom tells me when to do it. You don't mm -hmm. do it in your neighborhood. You do it right. in the country. Wisdom tells me when that's to. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, they're real good. Yeah, wow. they're real good. Wow. Well, wow. Man, you know what? I I could talk all night long. I've been doing. I'm finna be quiet because see, man, I'm loving wow. you. No, no, that's what we talk. That's what we talk to heal to heal you. Exactly. And the people hear you, right. but you can speak into their lives, speaking to our lives. Right. Wow. You know, because yeah, yeah, God, so good. It, it, oh. It's it's you know, and when we talk about you know, when we talk about those those experiences, that didn't only just work in my church life; that worked in my home life. You know, come on, we have yes. a village. We had a village. Mm -hmm. I tell them, I said, I lived in a gated community all of my life. As long as I lived in a home with my family, I lived in a gated community. Miss Rosa Barrow was one on one end of the street. Reverend Eugene Cooks and Miss Murdis Chapman them were on the other end of the street. And if you didn't live on our street, right. you couldn't come on our street with no foolishness because we had gatekeepers who watched our houses, who who helped my mom when she was. I don't ever remember going to a babysitter. I never remember going to a babysitter. The mm -hmm. whole time my mom and dad worked outside of the home, Miss they said, "Look, you get on that porch and don't you leave." Sit on that porch. You can go outside and play, but you better be back on this porch by the time them, the lights get dark. When the lights right. come on, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. Miss Rose Barrett have to get that switch and whoop me, right? I'd rather that she did, right? Because exactly. I'm gonna get another one when my mama got home. Yeah, yeah. my daddy got home because yeah. Miss Rose right. Barrett had to whoop me, or somebody had to chastise me. It's what he would say. Somebody else had to chastise you. Now I'm got to chastise you. Right, because mm -hmm. right. you you bring your reproach to me, you bring your shame to me. Yeah, folk got folks saying you ain't got no home training. Oh, training. No. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I tell my kids that now. Y'all need to know the switch is right. No. They you know, do. They were telling you know you ain't acting like you ain't got no home training. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but today's generation and today's society, they are they're different. They are so they are so much different than how we we were raised. And I'm gonna say, mm -hmm. you know, if you're 40 and, and above 35 to 40, you you're gonna fare out pretty good. But if you're under that 35 range, 30 range, yeah. we need much prayer and much help. They need they need, we need a lot of help in that area, right? right? So I keep asking God, you know, with this child care, God, why do you keep me here? Why do you keep me here? I, I don't wanna go home. I wanna go home. I'm ready to go home. He said, I have brought you to the kingdom. Jesus. Mm -hmm. For such a time as this. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. Those experiences that you just talked about, somebody needs to hear them. Yes. Mm -hmm. How 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 are how can they hear without a preacher? How how would they know if we don't teach them taking young parents? And I believe the the to the the problem, the solution to the problem is not so much of mentoring the children, that's part of it. But we really need to mentor the parents. Parents. Because we mentor children and we, we give them all these things we get, but but then they got to go back into that same environment. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So unless we take them out of the environment, things really don't change for them, you know. So how can we help them change their, but the environment has to change with the parent. Right. Mm -hmm. That's true. They don't, our, the generation that we're in now, don't want you to talk to I'm gonna say flee flee because I don't want to call not me. Everybody got to be. <laughs> she said flee flee. <laughs> uh -huh, flee flee. <laughs> Let me say foo foo. That one was mine. <laughs> okay, flee flee and foo foo. They don't want you. Don't want you to discipline. Them. They don't, yeah, uh huh. I want you to discipline them. They don't want you to say anything to their precious little angels. You know, right. I want to do more for my kids than than my mom and dad did for me. But I think I came out all right. Exactly. I think I turned out all right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. I ain't got no regrets, no problems with my life. I can never remember my lights ever being turned off when I lived in a home with my parents. I can never not remember not having a meal, a hot meal. Because like back in the day, women cooked then. Like, we ain't mm -hmm. talking bologna sandwiches. We talking pots on the stove, fried mm -hmm. chicken, you know, beans, pinto beans, cornbread. That's, I can't say that I ever went hungry. I can never say I can never say somebody come and pull the I car out right. I can't I, I don't have that testimony. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't have that. Right. That's because my mom and dad set some guidelines and some parameters for their lives and how they mm -hmm. was gonna raise us. Mm -hmm. I got a little boy. I said, Did you um get a snack today? Yes. <laughs> I went off. I said, who are you, who are you talking to? <laughs> Mind you, I'm older than him now. Right. Like, who are you talking to? Right. Said, Did you get a snack? He said, yes. I said, excuse me? Right. He said, yes, ma'am. Yeah. I said, okay. Yeah. All right. And so they must also, well, mama, everybody ain't raising their kids to say yes, ma'am. And them. I said, see, that's the problem. Right. Yeah. They lose the sense of respect and authority. Right. They think it's all about just having to be politically correct. You don't have to say, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, no, sir, yes, sir. My kids do. Even at 35 and 40, I'm still telling you, you put a handle on that when you talk to someone older mm -hmm. than you or a person of authority or respect. Mm -hmm. It's yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. Right. Mm -hmm. We do the same with our kids. Yep. You, I mean, it, 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 it sets parameters and guidelines for them. But a little kid telling me yes and no. Mm -hmm. I'm just blown over. I said, so mom, I said, do your mom let you say that to her? He says, yes. So I asked the mom, she said, well, it's okay if he says yes and no to us. I'm like, okay. Well, I said, well, he can't say yes and no to me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm not going to let him say yes and no to me. It just, right. just did something for me. You know, right. because I think that's a part of being our village. We have, at large, we as a people have just for, have become so lack of daisy or with life itself you know we don't we don't seem to value it in the smallest of things right now our, our in our community over in Dable, alabama man it's crazy right now mm -hmm. there have been shootings over there there have been it's uh, -huh. uh stuff happening over there 28 people hurt four people killed and right. you know it's just this shooting uh, locally here in Tallahassee county man it seems like some young person are not getting to see maybe a 20th birthday, you know, 17, 18, 16. And these are shootings, man. It, it's it's crazy. It, I just it's just it's un it's mind boggling. Right. Of the number of young people that have just passed away, you know. That's tell you this just how busy it was. Crazy. The devil can do whatever and they can say what it was so much that another mortician was able to open up a parlor in our community. Because there was just so many deaths. Mm -hmm. Wow. There That's was just so many deaths. They yeah. saw an opportunity. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. So it's 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 that's how we trust the processor over time. You mm -hmm. know, yes. we trust we trust him over time. And it's based on those experiences that we've had in the past. So unless that's why I say, you know, a prophet at 20, you ain't really had no experiences. Mm -hmm. right. You know, you ain't fought no demons. Right. You ain't had to. You ain't had to lay hands and cast out no demons. You haven't even been where they casting out demons. Mm -hmm. I've been in services where I've seen people demons get cast out, mm -hmm. and, and the people in the saints are saying, "Y'all better pray because he got to have somewhere to go when he leaves here." Right. Well, oh, your oh, oh, hand on the red. Put your hand on the red. I'm <laughs> saying, put your hand on the red. That's it. Because you gotta have somewhere to leave when you go here. Yeah. You should be here idle minded if you wanted to. Right. But why they would tell us, you know, why we pray, y'all better pray. Come yeah. on him. You sit up there laughing and giggling, playing if you want to. You right. jump off of him and he jump on you. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 They haven't they haven't seen demons cast out. They haven't seen people raised raised from, mm -hmm. from, from the dead. They haven't seen people at when I say raised from the dead at death's door and God bring them back. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've seen them at death's door where God brought them back. Mm -hmm. right? I've seen them where they lay hands on and God healed them of cancer right there on the spot. Mm -hmm. Jesus. That's wisdom. That's how we can trust the process. Exactly, Jesus. exactly. This, that's those good. experiences. Go ahead, brother. No, I was just saying that it's good. And I uh I know I had a few people uh from my job. Uh, to come, come on and we've been going through a lot at my job you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and, and we tend even myself sometimes tend to look at the process 
in the study of the processor. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. we and we have to focus on the on, on God, man. You know, stand on his word and what his words say. Exactly. You know, and I just feel like they're very important. Absolutely. But before we uh close, we want you to, if you don't mind, just to speak speaking to the people live. Uh, because I know there's people out there watching who are uh, or who will watch who uh who who going through some. Right. Either you I heard an old man say, either you're going through some. You head it into some or you head it out. Right. right. So, you know, we, we consistently find ourselves going through trials and tribulation right. because uh, it builds our endurance. And the Bible said those that endure to the end yeah. shall mm -hmm. see God. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, this resistance that we fight is very well needed to make us strong. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To make us strong. Uh, like since my son, just said for instance, since my son passed away, little stuff don't really get to me no more. I mean, it really don't. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because this pain that I feel, I, I never, I never, I never felt it. Never right. looked forward. I, I never looked for it. It just caught caught me and my wife off guard. Just a phone call one night, bam. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just and it's hard. It is yeah. difficult. Right. You know, it it is it, difficult. You know. Yeah. So. So we can, you can close your speak, you know. It's it is difficult, but it's doable. I want to encourage you that it's very difficult, mm -hmm. but it is doable when we know. And so that's going to let me speak to this portion of that person. First of all, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, that's going to be key. Number one, you gotta yeah. have that number one relationship. You got to have that. Other than that, other than having that relationship with Him, what we're saying and what we're talking about really won't matter to you it won't it won't have any relevance it won't have any any power it won't have any volume it won't speak to you that's true because the bible says a corner man receiveth not the things of the spirit neither can he know them right. for they are spiritually discerned right. so right. for the number one i would say you need to have a relationship with jesus christ and if mm -hmm. you're not in a place uh where you're getting what you need find you somewhere Mm -hmm. where they are teaching the word of God. I ain't talking about jumping up and down, you know, hooping, hollering. That's that's good for our flesh sometimes. But my spirit man, mm -hmm. is what, my spirit man yes. is what needs to be fed. Right. So I would say number one is that you need to enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Get to know him as your personal Lord and Savior. Right. And once you've done that, then you need to get on a church that's teaching the word of God. Yes. yes. You need to get on a church that's teaching the word of God. And the only way we can get rid of the pain that we have is we have to work through that pain. The only way you're going to get rid of what you're doing is you got to go help somebody else who's going through what you're going through. Man. Yeah. God. Mm. That's how you get over. Go help somebody else who's going through what you're going through. Go help that person. And that may be the hardest <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> I've gone to a, a friend of mine who lost her husband last week. I'm pastor, but I said, God, I'm, I'm hurting. I said, but I'm going I'm to put my cloak down. I'm going to take off my collar. I'm going to put on me a pair of tennis shoes. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to serve some meals. Uh, at, at, at the repast, I'm going to serve meals. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to greet people because I know as I greet them and I help them that you're going to help me. As, as, as we help one another, as you give that pain away, you got to give it away, bro. Jeez. You got to help somebody. Who's going through what you're going through? Jesus. You got to serve. Remember, we're servants. So, number one, get in that relationship with Jesus Christ. And once you do that, find that church that's a Bible teaching church and then go to work serving. Just Jesus. go to work and serve. Just go to work and serve. It seems like there was one time all I wanted to do was come home, take a bath, go to bed. Come home, take a bath, go to bed. Come on. I wasn't eating, I lost weight. All I want to do is come home, take a bath, go to bed. Right. I was going to church every Sunday, trying to stand up, teach and preach the word of God. And finally, it just came to, I was like, God, I, I, I'm going, I'm, I'm about to lose. I'm about to lose it over here. You got to come, you got to, you got to come see about me. Mm -hmm. He said, when you have done it to the least of these, you've done you it to me. me. Mm -hmm. It's okay. So then I just started serving again. I just started serving again. Right. I started serving again. I started serving. I forgot that I was pastor. That doesn't matter because I'm trying to get through this process. Forget, forget my title. 
take off the collar, get rid of the cloak, you know. Right, right. I'm, I'm grateful for this platform. I talked to my daughter today, and she said, Mom, God's doing good things for you. He's opening up so many doors. I said, yeah, he let me hang out with the young folk today. <laughs> <laughs> You put me on the platform with the young people. Right. Let me hang out with the young folk, you know. Right. But we have to, go ahead. Go ahead. We have to give ourselves away. That's how we get. That's how it's. Right. That's how it's doable. We gotta yeah. go help somebody else mm -hmm. who's going through what you're going through. Right. The only way you're gonna heal is to help a hurting person. Uh, the, re the reason I'm thrilled because. God told me that two days ago. Wow. Two days ago. God told me them exact, because I'm trying to figure, figure it out, you know. He told me them exact same words two days mm -hmm. ago. Yeah. Yeah. He'll speak to us if we'll let him. Yeah. Like, That's what I'm like. Now, come on now. How this coming now? You just told me that. Yeah. God, he comfort us. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. So, so that we can comfort others. others. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I'm like, I'm like, the Holy Spirit speaking through her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> speaking through her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He that have an ear, let him hear yes. what the Spirit is saying. Yes. And you are speaking volumes tonight. Yes. My yes. mind went to when you said that, you know, even, even our, how God just set everything up. Our ministry is chosen for service. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Right. We believe in serving. That's yeah. what we're taught to do. Yes. <laughs> serve, you know, serve the community, serve people. You mentioned in the beginning, Jesus didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. Exactly. Your son died serving. Mm. So did pastor. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You, he's in the hospital. Uh -huh. Positioned to pray. Yes. Serving. Mm. Not his needs, but everybody else's needs. Exactly. For them. And so to me tonight, it's just confirmation that we have to serve. Have that to. We can't quit. Right. We can't give up on God. We can't go grow weary and well doing. Exactly. Is you will reap if you think not. Oh, no, no, no. And we ain't talking, I ain't talking about reaping here. Mm -mm. Pastor Pennington taught us about crowns. I want a crown. Come on now. I want a crown in heaven. There's different crowns that you can get. That's what I'm aiming for. I ain't aiming yeah. for this stuff here. Come on here. This stuff will pass away. Heaven and now. The only thing that's going to last is eternal. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not worried about this stuff here on earth. I want mm -hmm. a crown in heaven. And mm -hmm. I just I pray somebody is receiving this word on tonight. You've said so much. <laughs> so much and i thank god for you using you it's confirmation for me that we can't give up no can't the way we're going to make it through this is to go out and serve others mm -hmm. who's been through what we've been through mm -hmm. help someone else going through what we're going through exactly and that's the purpose of even these testimonies we want people to see that we are overcome by the blood of the lamb yes jesus already did that on the cross absolutely, and his absolutely. Blood, he's the lamb Mm. He's the line of the tribe of, of Judah. Yes. It's already yes. been done. Now it's our testimony. Mm. The blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Yes. yes. Hearing our word. Mm. Teaching people, telling people about the goodness of God. Hallelujah. And so I thank God for you. I can. You I can feel like Sean right now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Sean hey, hey, hey. right now. We don't have church. Yeah, we don't have church. Real <laughs> give myself away. Yeah, yeah. You said that. We got to give ourselves away. That's exactly right. And my mind went to the song. I don't know if he'll do it. Hmm. I don't know if he can. What? A little bit. Just a little bit of it. He can do it. Give myself give away. Give myself away. Oh, my Lord. I give myself away. So you can use me and give myself away. Oh. And oh my Lord, and give myself away. So you can use me. Here I am. Here I stand. Here I stand for my life, for my life is 
in your hand. And Lord, I'm going to speak. Yes, yes, yes. All desires reveal in me. I give myself away. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. By the only song I know. <laughs> well, they always tell me we need but one. We don't need but one. We don't need but one scripture to whoop the devil. We don't mm-hmm. need but one. They give him a black eye. That's what Pastor used to say. My dad, yeah. you don't need but one scripture to beat the devil up. You don't need yeah, one. Exactly. You get that one and you hold on to it. You hold on and you hold on. Listen, guys, it has been a blessing. Thank yeah. y'all so much for, for letting me share the platform with you all tonight. I really, really appreciate you. I I, I, I know Charles. Um, Shanice, I'm probably sure I know you once I get to know that family. I'm sure mm-hmm. I do. But I watched this young man, you know, them drums, little Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> little Charlie. <laughs> you know, we watched him grow up. And so uh, yeah. he's always just been a big part of my family, my whole yeah. life. You know, his grandma, his granddad, his uncles and aunt, my dad. And you know, we did ministry for years, did church for years. And so yeah. um, I really appreciate you guys for loving me enough to think enough of me to let me share this platform with you. Thank you so, so much. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, ma'am. I'm looking forward to God continue to do great things through your through your life and through your ministry. It speaks for itself. Chosen or service. Or service. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we're chosen. That's what we do. We ain't we ain't trying to be nothing else. We ain't trying to be nobody else. Just trying to serve. That's all we're trying Amen. to do. Just do, do what he called us to do. That's what the old folks said. Do what he called you to do. That's it. Just do what he called you to do. So I love you guys. Thank y'all so much for having me on. God bless you. I love y'all. Yes. God bless you. God bless you. you. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Yes. Amen. Thank you for joining. Amen. Amen. Thank God.